Hey everybody! Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to get started on the first little portion of our book, Combating Cult Mind Control by Stephen Hassan. Uh, it's an amazing read. I actually listen to it in the car, in between my work sites, and um, I also have the hard copy that I can read while in bed because I'm a total nerd and I like to have both of multiple books. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm not going to play the introduction. Definitely read it if you have the book. It has some really interesting information. Um, headlines, Cult Efforts to Stop Exposure, talks about how different organizations have tried to stop exposure. For instance, Scientology sued Time Magazine over their 1990 cover story. And then um, he talks about how they're constantly trying to uh, discredit the activists. Um, he's felt that he's experienced that directly. I know a lot of the other activists on YouTube have also felt that. And they felt it from Jehovah's Witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses have um, try to discredit the activists, uh, apostates, which, whatever, I mean, it's going to get worse. <clears throat> and then he talks about the changes since the 1988 edition, um, which, fun fact, I was born in 1988, and it's my birthday month! And I finally get to celebrate my birthday! I'm so excited. I'm turning four this year. Um, and then he talks about um, what else has changed through from the first time he released it to now because as with anything in life, we gain knowledge, we gain experience, and that's exactly what he did. So he updated his book accordingly, which I think is fantastic. Um, he even changed tactics throughout the years, the way that he approaches certain things, um, the way he helps cult members. So he talks about that and I think that's excellent. Also in the foreword is the first time you hear the name Jehovah's Witness. And I just want to make a point to read this short little verbiage. Still others, such as Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons, have been highly visible for many decades. In the early editions of Combating Cult Mind Control, I did not include stories, he did not include stories about those Christian groups. However, over the years, I have been contacted by many people who were born into these organizations telling me how the book helped them. So and he goes in to explain later in the book how it actually, Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons and things like that, they do fall under these certain guidelines. Um, and then he has a whole section, an invitation to safety. So I really think it is um, important to read this if you have the book. I think that's something that you could benefit from, but we're going to jump right into the recording of the preface and let's start there. Preface to the first paperback edition. Since the first publication of Combating Cult Mind Control in the fall of 1988, I have heard from hundreds of people who have told me about the positive impact this book has had on their lives. Lawyers, educators, mental health professionals, and clergy have let me know how valuable it has been in their work. Families have told me incredible stories of how reading it led to a series of phone calls, meetings, and ultimately successful interventions with loved ones. Yet nothing gratifies me more than to hear from individuals who were involved with the destructive cults for many years and who felt that reading this book helped them open a door to freedom. For each of you who might be a current or former member of an organization that is controversial, and to those who are friends or relatives of someone involved with such a group, I have some special words of advice. If you are currently a member or a former member of a group or organization that has been alleged to be a cult, you may find that it takes a great deal of strength, courage, and integrity to make the effort to learn about this phenomenon. But as difficult as it is, keep in mind how much you stand to gain by reading this book in its entirety. Knowledge is power. Stop. Knowledge is power. Okay, so... I have like my books all underlined and I've got sticky notes and 
yeah, I've, I've gone through all of this multiple times. So if you guys have to go back or want to go back and re-listen or reread or whatever, definitely do it. Go for it. He even suggests that. Um, he suggests reading this book multiple times, taking notes, um, just reflecting on what it means for you. But knowledge is power is, it means everything to me because in the Jehovah's Witness organization, you you weren't allowed to look outside of their resources. You're not allowed to listen to YouTubers. You're not allowed to go search on the internet. If you have a question or a concern about something, they direct you to their material, to their website, to their knowledge, to their information. And if they were to find out you were doing outside research or going to an outside source, you could technically get in trouble for that. Not technically, you will. You will get counseled um, because it's, it's, there, it's considered bad. Um, anyways, so I just want to bring out that anyone who's been in a cult, having knowledge for the first time and the freedom to access that knowledge it means everything to me and then it takes a great deal of strength courage and integrity let's just stop and applaud yourself stop and acknowledge the fact that you are taking a huge step in benefiting yourself or someone else this isn't an easy journey. This isn't an easy task. It's not fun to admit that I was in a cult my entire life and I'm basically stupid in certain ways of life because I just flat out don't understand. I'm having to educate myself. I have to gain this knowledge. It's not easy for me to admit that, but it benefits me to do so. So that's my little two cents on that. You may even discover that, although the public views your group as a cult, there is in fact no mind control being used. I have been thanked countless times by members of unorthodox organizations who are able to, once and for all, discuss with their families and friends the criteria I outline in this book. By reading and discussing the material, they can demonstrate that they are exercising their own free will and continue their involvement with a clear conscience. So, if you're afraid to use the word cult, let's pay attention to this part. You shouldn't be scared to read or talk about it. If you're truly not in a cult, then you should be able to prove it. And this book should be able to prove it. It's actually proved it for other people. So, I just want to point that out. If you're hesitant or nervous, whatever it may be, keep in mind. If you're not in a cult, this book will prove it. However, if you are in a cult, the book will also prove that too. If you are questioning the ethics, policies, or practices of your group, approach this book with an open mind. However, please be careful about letting other group members know you are reading it, as this might invoke unwanted attention and disciplinary measures from the group's leadership. If it is at all possible to take some time off and get some distance from other members, I urge you to do so. Find a place where you have minimal pressure and few distractions. Okay. That, I forget. It's so funny when I say things and then he just like flat out says it. It's, oh, I love this book. So <clears throat> it might provoke unwanted attention and disciplinary <clears throat> disciplinary measures from the group's leadership. Some cults, some groups definitely have a harsher way of going about disciplining someone. Um, I've heard of, you know, people scrubbing toilets and floors and, you know, or, or f uh, being physically abused. Uh, let's be clear, Jehovah's Witnesses don't practice any of that. So I was never forced to scrub a toilet. Have I scrubbed a toilet for the Jehovah's Witnesses? Yes, I have. But I wasn't like forced to. Um, I wasn't, to be careful the way I word this. 
We're going to skip over the abuse part because I'm not going to go into that because technically I have been abused in this religion. So I'm, I'm just going to avoid that one altogether. So disciplinary actions are different from every group. Um, I would say what you could expect as a Jehovah's Witness is if someone finds out is that they will um, provide a shepherding call where two elders, it might be three now, but at least two, have to they come to your house or they'll meet you at the kingdom hall um if you're a sister they won't meet you alone they'll meet with your husband they have to meet you as a couple and they give you counsel and guidance basically they'll tell you that you're not allowed to read this material because it's not provided by the society and the devil is satan is going to pressure you and give you false information and you should not listen to anything outside of the organization's material because it could be apostate material etc etc so again they're trying to suppress your emotions they're trying to control what you're taking in and what you're allowed to read and not allowed to read so yeah, um, that is 100% something that will happen in the Jehovah's Witnesses. Keep it a secret. Don't tell anyone. I also strongly suggest reading the book at least two times. When reading it for the first time, do so with the perspective that it is describing other groups, preferably ones that you do believe are destructive. And really allow yourself the opportunity to understand the process of mind control and the characteristics of destructive cults. Be sure to make notes as you read, writing down everything you agree with or disagree with, as well as things you want to research further. Then, do all the follow-up research necessary to fully answer your questions. So I did this. That's what actually started me on this journey, is that I started writing down all of my experiences and by the time I was done with like half a chapter my my hand hurt and I was like I just decided it was too much <laughs> so um, yeah I found a new way to to do this but you will be shocked and amazed if you stop and relate this to your own experience and I like that he says if you disagree with it to acknowledge that as well he's not saying He's the one and only way, and you can't argue with what he's saying, and blah, 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 blah. You can have a disagreement. If you have a disagreement, put it down below in the comments. I want to know. Once you have finished the book, give yourself at least a few days before reading it again. When you pick it up a second time, read it objectively, as though it may or may not apply to your own personal situation. Make a new set of notes on what you agree with, what you disagree with, and what you need to research further. On completing this second reading, go find the answers to the issues that are raised pertaining to your own group. Take some time off, if possible a minimum of a few weeks, and go to a restful place, away from other group members, and gather more information from other sources. Remember, if the group is a legitimate, valid organization, it will stand up to any scrutiny. Oh my God, this is one of my favorite lines. Remember, if the group is a legitimate, valid organization, it will stand up to any scrutiny. Let that sink in. It is far better to find out the truth now than to invest more time, money, and energy, only to discover years later that the group is very different from its idealized image. Truth is stronger than lies, and love is stronger than fear. If you are involved with a religious organization, keep in mind that God created us with free will, and that no spiritual organization would ever use deception or mind control or take away your freedom. I just read that a couple of times because I loved it so much. Truth is stronger than lies. Jehovah's Witness organization refers to themselves as having the truth. So if they have the truth, then none of this book should apply to them. 
truth is stronger than lies. Eight people in New York. If you were a family member, friend, or loved one of someone who was involved in what you suspect is a destructive cult, it is best to approach the problem in a systematic and methodical manner. Avoid overreacting and getting hysterical. Don't jump the gun and tell the person that you have bought this book or are reading it. Wait until you and other relevant people have had a chance to read and get prepared before planning a team strategic interactive approach, SIA. Be sure to also read my book, Freedom of Mind, Helping Loved Ones Leave Controlling People, Cults, and Beliefs, which will offer a great deal of further information and guidance. Unfortunately, there have been cases in which people have bought combating cult mind control and impulsively given it to cult members. This can backfire badly if anyone from the cult finds out. Most cult groups fear anything and anyone that might cause them to lose members, and giving a member this book will tip them off that you are educating yourself. So, so true. Most cult groups fear anything and anyone that might get, cause them to lose members. And giving a member this book will tip them off that you are educating yourself. So, by all means, I don't want to discourage anyone from spreading uh, their new, you know, like what they're learning and what they're listening to. Um, you know, if, if you're listening to this video and you like it, by all means, tell people. But I also... I also want to encourage you to keep it secret. If you're secretly listening to this on your headphones in the middle of the night or when no one's around at school or something like that, keep it to yourself. Just don't talk about it. And I know that sounds shady, but it's, it's honestly, it's to protect yourself. I only broke away from the organization because I myself stepped, I, I left and I was free of their controlling ways. When I was free of them controlling me, that was when I was finally able to start recognizing signs. I started taking in knowledge for myself I wasn't listening to strictly the brothers and sisters, the elders telling me, that's bad, don't listen to that. That's bad, don't read that. Because believe me, if, especially if you're still living at home, if you're younger and you have parents, they will take this away from you in a heartbeat. So yeah, it'll cause you a world of trouble and hurt. Just be shady for a little bit and keep it on the down low. Be careful. Instead of sounding the alarm, adopt a curious yet concerned posture. Try to avoid confrontations and ultimatums. Read this book as many times as you need to in order to clearly explain to others the characteristics of mind control, the criteria of a destructive cult, and the basics of cult psychology. The BITE model in Chapter 4 will be a particularly valuable tool. Get as many concerned friends and relatives involved as you can. A strong first step will be for them to read this book too. If everyone is prepared, they will not be caught off guard. Although this book is meant as a resource, there is no substitute for professional advice geared to your own unique situation. Do not hesitate to seek such help from people who are qualified and informed. I am now developing programs to train mental health professionals, former cult members, and activists on mind control, undue influence, and cult psychology. Also, please consult the wealth of free interviews, talks, workshops, and other resources on the freedomofmind.com website. So that's it. That's the end of our preface, and we'll go into chapter one. Um, as he says, he just, just to go back a little bit he talks about the bite model b-i-t-e um i had no idea what this was when i was a jehovah's witness because once again you're not allowed to research you're not allowed to look at anything you're not allowed to 
talk to anyone outside of the organization basically you know you can but not in depth about the the only way you should be having an in-depth conversation with someone in this regards is if you're preaching to them and trying to get them convert you know you're trying to study with them and you're preaching jehovah's witness material basically so anyways um i just want to say i had no idea what the bite model was it's really important if you're unsure google it youtube it there's shorter explanations that you can get a quick definition of it it explains what a cult is like what makes up a cult and he goes into this in chapter four but obviously we're not going to be there for a while um because we're at the very very beginning so if you're curious please research it google it youtube it we're done i'll leave you alone talk to you later